Hello, this is Malorian, this is Orc Tactical Team, and what we're going to be talking about today is a whole bunch on the new Warriors of Chaos book. So, this just came out today. Uh, yeah, a bunch of people out there are wondering what it's all about, what are the big changes, we're going to see the change in the metagame, and I just want to kind of touch really in general everything in here. The marks, the spells, all the different units, what I think of the book in a whole, and uh, yeah, pretty much a general thing on this book. Uh, just to let you know, a couple of things I won't be touching on in this video is kind of best builds right now, or uh, also special characters. Special characters, I'm going to save for next week, just to give me more time to try and think of how they synergize with the army very well, and then I'll come back to that. But otherwise, Everything kind of in a nutshell is what I'll be covering today. So I guess the other disc disclaimer I need to have right away is that if you're coming in and looking at this book, forget about the old book, right? If you have the old book in mind when you come to read this one, you'll be completely out to lunch because they really changed the focus of this book. Really before, I mean, you had a couple of different builds, but for the most part, you had your big, huge blocks of infantry. Sometimes you'd be backed up with your hell cannon. You'd be having your little disc guy flying around, and, you know, you could do other little shenanigans, but for the most part, that's it. Just a whole bunch of, of infantry, maybe some cav or something, hell cannons in the back, and it's fairly straightforward. This book here is a lot like the Orc and Goblin book. A lot of good, very good choices, uh, a lot of different ways you can actually play the army, and if you're a Warriors of Chaos player, you should be very excited for this book. Uh, if you're going to take your old list and say like, oh boy, I can't wait to see what my old list does in this book here, you're probably going to be disappointed because as usual, some of the stuff that was really good before is of course either not here or nerfed now and then just really the whole focus of the whole book chain so let's just kind of jump right into it uh, of course again hardcover book lots of nice little pictures and all the good stuff there uh, the very first thing they have in here to talk about is the eye of the gods now the eye of the gods now is pretty much for characters and all the champions and really it's like before where if you ever beat somebody in a challenge and you have to actually do the last wound to them they can't just crumble or run away or anything like that uh, then you get a roll in this table here and or killing a monster but the really big thing here with the change of the eye of the gods is one they have some more extreme so i mean if you roll uh, a double ones there's a chance of this turning into a spawn if you roll double sixes it means you have a chance of turning into a demon prince which also kind of means that if you buy this book, you need to own a Demon Prince. Maybe not to use in your army, but just because if you ever do a challenge or kill a monster, you might turn into one. So you have to have it ready on hand. The other thing to really note about this here is that doubles now don't mean you re-roll. Everything in here is set up so that if you roll it again, it just kind of builds on itself. So if you already had plus one toughness, you just now have plus two toughness. It just kind of keeps on going. Uh, with that though as well is that there is no bad things in this anymore. I mean it used to be before that if you roll the seven uh, could be that the eyes closed you could get something stupid like plus one leadership or magic resistance with you know doesn't really do much or maybe fear you know a few things it's like oh well that's great it might be situational but for the most part you're really caring about like the plus one attack or armor save or toughness right those are the big things and of course you always want to have the four plus ward and stubborn which by the way is not here anymore thank god for us other players but uh, yeah that's the big thing here is that all of them are, are very useful unless you turn yourself into a spawn. But even then, if you roll double ones, you just have to pass a leadership test, which should be easy, and then you just get stupidity rather than being turned into a spawn anyway. So it's kind of an extreme case, and I guess that's the thing too. Just like how you have to have uh, a demon prince going into this now, everyone really needs a spawn so that's ready in case this ever happens. So there's that part there. Uh, next thing we have is the marks, and it's it's really pretty much the same as before. Uh, Corn is still giving you a frenzy. Tazinch is going to give you, you know, a ward or one better ward if you don't have it. Uh, one interesting thing is that if you ever have a channel of one, you get to re-roll it. So, a little bonus. Of course, before you got plus one to your to cast roll. Now they kind of changed it to the re-roll. Obviously, the old one was better, but hey, this is still something. Of course, the ward save is the biggest part of it anyway. The rest of it is just kind of gravy. Uh, Nurgle changed as well. Instead of going and changing the weapon skill of the other person, it's just straight up like River Trolls. You're minus one to hit. That's it. 
And of course, this is a lot better. Because before, again, minus one weapon skill, that was situational. If your weapon skill three as an, as an opponent, then it's a big deal, right? Because then you're hitting the warriors on a five plus. But uh, now, just as everybody is probably hitting them on a five plus, or it could even be worse, which we'll kind of get to later. Um, the next part here is Slanesh. It's the same type of thing. You know, you, you automatically pass the fear, terror, and panic, and you know, it's nice to take on some units on the flank and stuff. But another big thing here that changed with the marks is that now you can't mix. So if you have a character with the mark of corn, you can't put him in a unit with the mark of Nurgle. There's no more switching or anything like this, which personally I think is a good thing. It's, it really brings more character back to it, and you can get some silly things going on before that. You know, just just keep it nice and simple. Um, so that's really that there. And now we're gonna gonna go through the the different lores. And again, there's a lot of changes here, and for the most part, they're all fairly good. Of course, there's no lore corn or anything silly like that. But uh, let's kind of start with Tazinj. Now, with Tazinj, the lore attribute for this one is actually pretty cool. Pretty much, if you ever roll or cast a spell and it goes through, whatever sixes you had turn into power dice. So it's kind of a way where if you ever let a spell go through, um, that could be getting more power dice. So it's it, it's a fairly nice thing that should be coming up fairly regularly. You know, it's not something that's never going to happen. It should mean that over the course of the game, you're probably getting another power dice every single turn. So even though you lost the thing before, plus one in the cast, you're also kind of getting one more dice. So that's that there. Of course, that won't work if you're just hoping just a six dice gateway. They don't have a couple of dice for something else. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a nice thing to have. Now, they have the usual things, like they have their whole D6, D6 magic missile for their their uh, signature spell there. They have Treason of Tazinch, and this one changed a little bit. This is kind of, you know how before they had Pandemonium? Now it's kind of like you pick a unit, and that one unit works like that. And that's pretty good, because it was kind of crazy before where our whole army could not have, you know, General's leadership. I know for me as an Orc and Goblin player, that was pretty horrible. But, uh... Yeah, so now it's just a single unit. So that's, you know, that's all right. Uh, another one they have here that's could be very good is this Pink Fire Tazinch. Because what it is, it's kind of like the, the Flamer template. And what it does is that it moves away from you like artillery and then it do a, a strength six hit to everybody underneath the template. And of course, assuming this is going to be on a guy going around on a disc, so he's going to the side of a horde, brow, and this is going to be devastating. You know, just kind of think of the Salamanders that run to the flank of your unit and blast you, except this on average will be strength, you know, three or four type thing, instead of just being the, the three. So. And of course, it can always be higher because it's really devastate stuff. So next one here is Bolt of Change. And one of the things we have to start getting into now is talking about how this has kind of like the Warp Flame special rule. And what that really is on the ones that have this is that if you take a wound, on the following turn you take a toughness test, and if you fail, it's another D6, or sort of D3 wounds. So of course this will be bigger if you ever do it to monsters or something, but the thing is that if they pass the toughness test, they get a regen save of a 6+, plus, which really doesn't matter. So uh, that's really not a bad thing, it's just kind of like a silly thing to come up now and then. But the nice thing is that if you ever want to kind of zap monsters, this will be a good way of doing that extra little damage whenever this comes up. But really the bolt of change is just like a, a single time blast, uh, d6 plus 4 for the strength, and then I'll do d3 wounds normally. So, you know, bam, a lot of wounds probably right there, well, average of 2, and then the most monsters have low initiative, probably fail again, and then so really this here should do on average 4 wounds, which is pretty solid for a single spell that isn't even that hard to cast. That's another thing, a lot of these things to cast is fairly low. Uh, Glean Magic. This one's really cool because what you do, it's not something like before where you just kind of just, hey, do you have a spell? I'm just going to cast it. Well, what this happens here is you cast it, each side is going to roll a dice, add it to their magic level, and then if you beat them, you get to go and take one of their spells away. So pretty much their uh, wizard level will go down by one, and now if you didn't have that spell before, you have just another spell you can always cast. So. It, it is a thing where first of all you have to cast and then you have to beat their the roll off and all that stuff but still it's a really good way where you can just be plucking off their best spells right oh you got foot of gork no you don't i do now and you're a, a level lower so it, it is fairly powerful when it goes through and again very low to cast so really easy to do uh he-man 
Uh, next one here is Tazine's Firestorm. This one here is going to be just kind of like a scattering uh, template. There's a small one and a large one. Uh, the large one scatters more, but with this, you know, again, it's a, a D6. So you don't know what it's going to be. Average, it's going to be three or four, but you throw that into the middle of a horde and bam, it's just going to devastate them. Uh, next one, you got Gateway. Now, Gateway, of course, everyone was scared of it before because if you ever get strength 11 or 12, they're just dead. Uh, it's pretty much the same as before, but now if you get that uh, 11 or 12, you do 3d6 hits instead of 2d6. So, still pretty devastating since it's also automatically at strength 10. But uh, yeah, you know, it's nice that they kind of took that thing out because that could sometimes just be the game, right? Oh, Gateway, oh, your, your biggest unit with your characters is gone? Well, that's the game, seriously, especially if it's Vampire Counts or Tomb Kings or something like that. Now, some of these ones as well, they have access to other lores, and the other lore you can take if you have Tazinj is metal. So, with the change in the game where you're seeing a lot more things where you have these, you know, Morn Fang and a Demi Griff and all that stuff, this can be fairly important where you have this to try and, you know, on your Tazinj guys where you can be blasting them with that magic. Um, I'm going on to Nurgle. This, they're also a neat one because they come with death, which makes sense. But what their attribute here is, is that if you ever successfully cast something on a six, your toughness and your wounds increases by one for the entire game. So again, if you're just kind of like doing a lot of little spells over the course of the game, you're going to be getting a couple of sixes and all of a sudden, you know, your, your toughness four or whatever caster will be toughness six by the end of the game and, you know, almost impossible to kill, really. Uh, going with his uh, signature spell for Nurgle, the first one there is pretty much that same thing with the whole flamer template, except it doesn't scatter off. So this one here is a little eh. It has to be pretty much a thing where you march him in a unit up and then you cast it. I mean, there's always a possibility that you put him on a steed or something and you can be rushing around. But, I mean, I, I don't think for the most part you're going to be seeing that. You might. But for the most part, it's kind of a weak signature spell. Although, of course if you ever get it off, it's going to really devastate things. And what it actually does for the strength of that is it's really just a toughness test. So again, if you're up against something that's really deadly to you, like white lines or something, boom, just march up to them, do it, and you're going to kill you know half the guys under the templates. And that could actually be pretty devastating. So I guess situational, but uh, not as awesome as I think that the pink fire will be for the uh, Tazinch side, just because of the way that it's not as fast on mobile of a caster. Uh, the next one that they have here is the number one is the Miasma of Pestilence. Now this one is pretty cool because you get to reduce the initiative or weapon skill by one or you can boost it to do it by D3. Now one of the really good things you can do with this then is that remember as Nurgle you're also already making it so the enemy is minus one to hit you. Now with your guys that are weapon skill five if you're taking normal guys all you have to do is reduce their weapon skill down to two and they're hitting you on five pluses normally and then sixes. So this here is a beautiful thing to cast. I mean most guys will be already uh, weapon skill three or four anyway so you do this on the lowest version which is super easy to get off bam all of a sudden you're only being hit on sixes in combat and that's amazing. Now the one after this, this is <laughs> uh, a pretty awesome one. Okay, so let's do the next one here. Blades of Purification, Poison Attacks, eh, it's just like the Gift of the Spider God. Uh, goes from 6 to 5 plus if you already have it. Th this next one here, Curse of the Leper, is amazing spell. This is the one that I think is just the real focus of this, uh, the whole lore. Because what it does is it can be either an Augment or an Hex. So if you cast it on yourself, then you're going to be increasing your toughness by D3. <clears throat> and so really this is just uh, flesh to stone from lore of life, except that it's you know on a D3 instead of just the plus two, which on average is that anyway. But I mean, that, that just wins you combats. So already you have something in the lore where you might be hitting, being hit on sixes, you get something off like this, you're being wounded on sixes. And this is already on War as a Chaos, which also has a good armor. So man, you can be so resilient. The other awesome thing is that it can also be a hex. So you can be reducing the toughness of an uh, enemy unit. And remember, a lot of the stuff here in the lore is based off of toughness. So if all of a sudden you have one guy that's going to do Curse of the Leper, 
you might have been toughness, you know, four or five before that, but reduce it by D3, toughness goes down, guy goes over, does the steam of corruption, bam, teardrop, all of a sudden you're doing a whole bunch of toughness tests at, you know, a toughness one or two, boom, you're just taking guys off like crazy. So really ver very versatile spell and just amazing spell to have. Uh, definitely, if you're up against this, try and stop it. But there's so many nice ones where I think this is where they'll be trying to play this like a slam, where it's just little spells, little spells, little spells. And I mean, if you if some of these things go off, it's amazing. So you're trying to stop everything, but at the same time, for all the ones you go through on a D6, their caster is getting a lot better. And I mean, the good thing too is it's not just having more toughness; it's also another wound. So if you ever worry about you know dying from miscast wounds or something like that, this is going to save you. Uh, next one here is the Rancid Visitations, and this one's here is just kind of a more of a normal magic missile. It has a D6 strength 5 hits, but then you have to pass a toughness test or you get hit again. And it just keeps on going until that test is passed. Again, if you go do that with Curse of the Leper, reduce their toughness first, and then do it. Yeah, have fun passing, passing that toughness 1 test, you know, high elves, bam, bam, bam. Oh, look, you, you know, all your Swordmasters are dead. Ugh, that's uh, tough luck there, <laughs> you know, so very, very powerful combination there. Uh, next one here is Fleshy Abundance, and what it really does is it gives somebody a 5 plus regen, or you can boost this up and then uh, make it so that everybody within 18 has it, and this can be amazing because this is all units, uh, friendly units in there, so you're giving it to monsters, chariots, everything is just getting this 5 plus, and it's just a very, very good <laughs> spell to have as a bubble. And it is harder to cast when it's the bubble, but uh, man, it, it can be uh, a lifesaver and really boosting and having a lot of synergies with other elements in the army. Uh, last one here is Plague Wind. It's kind of this you know, regular magical vortex, and of course it's based off toughness spells. Of course, again, then it's awesome if you get off Curse of the Leper, and it's otherwise just your usual type of uh, vortex. Last one here is Laura Sinesh. This is probably my least favorite one of the entire book. Didn't really have any of the cool things I was hoping for it. Uh, the lore attribute here is one where for every wound you do with this lore, then your caster will, you roll a dice, and on a six, your caster will have its weapon skill, initiative, and attacks increased by one. Pretty cool. However, of course, you need to be getting wounds off. Then you need to get a six. And for the most part, you usually see Laura Sinesh being like little sneaky stuff, not like damage. And so... And of course, this will be like, then your sorcerer is getting better in combat, and I don't know if you want your sorcerer in combat anyway, so maybe that'd be really nice if you were doing like a Slanesh uh, Demon Prince or something, but it's kind of a, an odd one. So let's go to their signature spell, which is the Lash of uh, Slanesh. It's really just <clears throat> uh, a straight line that's going out, a direct damage, and it's a whole thing who anyone who falls on the line takes a strength three hit with uh, the armor piercing rule. So just kind of, you know, the little line type spell, which is all right. It can kind of work with that. Not very powerful whatsoever. Uh, their next spell is one where it's a hex. Gives them, now this one I actually do like, because it makes them always strike last, which is nice. But the greatest thing is that it's random movement D6. And there's two different things you can do with this. One, if for some reason you're doing a ranged type of uh, thing or there's one unit you don't want to fight, well, you cast this on them. And whereas they might have been, you know, knights marching 14 inches, well, no, now you're just moving D6 inches because it's random movement D6. And on average, you're only moving three or four inches. The other part of it, too, is if you're fighting in combat and you know you're going to lose, bam, you put this on them. And all of a sudden, they're only chasing you D6 rather than the full 2D6 or 3D6 takes the two highest. So it can be. Pretty good either way that you kind of cast that one. Uh, next one is the Pavane Slanesh. This one here is a direct damage. It's really just a thing where it's, you target out a single enemy. He has to take a leadership on 3d6 and otherwise they take a wound. So, you know, that type of a thing. You can kind of snipe out some things, try and do a last little wound. Uh, this is going to become up better later where they have another one where you hex units and then they have to roll an extra d6 for the leadership test and drop the lowest so that can have some synergy in there but at the same time it's not the devastating synergy you have from the Nurgle lore and as well too uh, something I didn't touch on there is because you have the one spell that reduces toughness if you ever do one of those death spells that go and are based off toughness well they're just screwed right so pretty awesome 
Uh, the next one here is Hysterical Frenzy. What it does is it gives Frenzy, if you already have Frenzy, it's a plus two. This is another cool one It can be Augment or Hex. And the reason why you'd be wanting to give Frenzy to your opponent is not only is it a thing where you can go then and bait them, but it's also a thing where at the end of every uh, magic phase they're taking D6 strength three hits. So, you know, it's something where you can be grinding things down. Uh, you know, even let's say if it's a weapon team from a Slanesh, right? Put this on there. First of all, it might not be able to shoot because it charges. And then second of all, at the end of the phase, it's probably going to kill itself anyway with those wounds. So it, it, it's situational. And, I mean, if you the, the best thing here I can see is giving the frenzy to the opponent so that you can, you know, bait them with your dogs or whatever. But, you know, of course, giving frenzy to your own guys can be good too, of course, if, as long as you can control that whole magic phase. It can really save you the cost of putting on the, the, the marks on all your guys. <clears throat> Uh, next one is the Slicing Shards. This is kind of like before where they take D6 strength 4 hits. Uh, then they have to pass a leadership test or else they take another one and it keeps on going. So of course if you can have those shenanigans with the leadership it can do well. But again this is weaker than the other one. And you know having that extra dice shenanigan here isn't as big as reducing your toughness. So you know it, it's, it's one of the things where it's nice but it's just when I keep on looking back at Nurgle, Nurgle is just so awesome. Uh, the final one here is pretty cool and what it does is that it's a hex and then what you can do is that either one enemy within 12 or all enemies within 12 will take 2d6 hits and on a 4 plus they take a wound with no armor saves. So especially if you're going up against Bretonians or you know another army that's really based off of armor you just kind of rush around. Of course Lanesh does have good mob mobility as well cast this and boo 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 just be killing lots of guys or hell if they have one knight unit you just cast that on the one unit bam 2d6 you know you're looking at seven hits on them so probably three of them are going to die with the four plus the wound three or four so that's fairly awesome actually and of course if there's lots of it well you're just smashing everybody so not a bad you know major spell there uh then we get into these mutations and powers and so it's it actually, when I look at them, they're seen a lot more like the uh, Beast of Chaos ones. Uh, some of them on here are actually, the neat thing is that they're actually magical items as well. So since your allowance will let you have magical items and these gifts, if your items are maxed out, you can then be taking some of these things from gifts. So I'm sure there's going to be some neat combinations coming from there. But some of the, the ones in here is there's a Demon Blade that gives you D6 plus 3 attacks. You know, this could be a nice thing to have in a sorcerer or something like this, but of course on a roll of one, you're hitting yourself. Usually that doesn't really matter. But I mean, if you want to have a sorcerer that's getting more attacks, that's a cool way of doing it. Uh, Color of Corn, we have the Magic Resistance 3. That can be okay, but I mean, it's not as big as it used to be. Uh, Unholy Strike. Now this one is I really like because what it is, instead of doing normal attacks, you do one that is double your strength and has the D3 wound special rule. So again, a very awesome thing to have on one of your wizards. This is just a gift. It's not arcane or anything like that. So if somebody tries to come after you, bam, you just hit them the once. I mean, you're going to be strength eight or whatever. So I mean, you're going to wound, go through armor, D3 wounds. On average, you're killing a hero. And then a third of the time, you can kill a lord. Pretty decent thing to have for fairly low points. And of course I'm not going to talk about points or anything like that because I don't want this to be taken off the air. <laughs> uh, then they have one that's pretty cool that you can get a strength for a breath weapon. So that can always be very handy. I mean one of the issues that Warriors of Chaos always have is dealing with Steadfast because they are so elite. So whenever you can get breath weapons that can really help you out. Uh, then we have an arcane item one, that uh, chaos fam familiar, that lets you know one more spell, and you get plus one to your channeling. I can see it's being worthwhile, but I mean, it's just one of the things where a scroll is better, a dispel scroll, so, I mean, if you have multiple mages, this might find its way in, but otherwise, eh, we'll kind of see. Uh, the next one I'm sure I'm going to see all the time, it's uh, scaled skin, which gives you a five plus uh, scaly skin. So, I mean, of course, it's just like the beasts of chaos, where whenever you want to try and have a guy with a really good armor save without needing to be mounted or all these other things, throw that on. And starting off from chaos armor, that means you're already at a two plus save with nothing else. So, I mean, pretty easy. Just put on that, give him a great weapon, and you have a guy on foot that's a two plus save and a great weapon. So, I mean, of course, there's other synergies as well. Uh, you have these things where you can give it to the demon princes and stuff. So, demon prince with an okay armor save, you know, you can do something like that too. Uh, next one here is one where it's only for a slanesh. It's called the Allure Slanesh, pass leadership where you can't be attacked. 
you know, type of thing. And of course, if you're already making them do on 3D6, there's a good chance that they should probably fail. Uh, poisonous slime, poison attacks, and you also get a 5 plus ward against poison attacks. Kind of a silly extra thing to add, but hey, why not? Uh, Icar Acid, a thing where every time you get hurt, they take a strength for. I don't like this one because it's based all off you getting hurt, so obviously that's always going to be a bad thing. Uh, burning Body, where you have flaming attacks and the uh, you have a 5 plus ward against flaming attacks. You know, if you really need to get that flaming attacks in there because you're worried about hell pits or whatever, it's one way of putting it in there, but you know, sure. I mean, the flaming banner is just as many points. You can just give that to the unit. Uh, soul Feeder. Now this one is, is actually I like a lot because what it does is that every single time you do a wound you roll a d6 and on a, a 6 you get a wound back. So it's always very hard to try and get your wounds back on some of these characters and I mean one of the things too is if, if you had this on your Demon Prince, at least with all your attacks, you have a good chance of being able to heal yourself up and keep this up. So I think it's a pretty cool one to have. I mean it, it's not many points so if you have a few, you know, throw it on, why not? Uh, and especially with Nurgle, something where it can ending up with a lot of wounds, having those chances to get them back can really help you in the game there. Uh, then you have one where, again, it's, it's very amazing, where this is a third eye of disease. And what this one does is you get to reroll ward saves of one. So really what that means is that normally, because your ward save gets improved, you're probably going to take the Talisman of Preservation, have a 4 plus ward, which turns to a 3 plus ward, and then if you overroll a one, you reroll it. So man, you're really only failing on a two for your initial roll and then a one or a two on your second roll. So the chances of, of failing this stuff is just, this is a really good thing. It's very little points. So I'm pretty sure anybody that's going to Zinch, you're just going to see this guaranteed on all the guys. And the nice thing too is, I mean, if you have the Demon Prince, this is another way of making him a little bit more survivable. Uh, then we have Nurgle's Rot, and this one here where everybody in base contact with you uh, takes a strength one hit and armor saves. Again, if you have the points, maybe, but otherwise, it's eh, one of those kind of ones. And then this Hideous Visions, which is a, a very cheap one to get. And it just gives the, the fear rule, but then they can't use your leadership for something else. So don't put it on your general. And otherwise, it's just kind of, I guess, you know, I guess if you're going with Sladesh and you're doing the leadership game, sure, you can throw this in there and uh, get more out of it. Now we get on to their artifacts, and of course, just like everybody else, it's been reduced, so they don't really have crazy pages and pages anymore. But, you know, there's some in here that are okay. Uh, the first one is the Hellfire Sword. So this one here is one where it's kind of like before. Uh, you have the flaming attacks, you're doing D3 special wounds, but a nice thing here is that no armor saves can be taken against it. So if you compare that to other ones or allow no armor saves, and again, in the meta, you're seeing that you're seeing more and more armor saves. So this is a nice thing to have, and then making it flaming and D3 runes on top of that is pretty solid. Uh, another nice thing too is that every time you kill guys with it, it's kind of like making them explode, and so you can kind of go and make guys get hurt. Uh, the bad thing about this is that it's also like the fell blade. So at the end of every turn, you have to roll a dice and on a one, you're suffering a wound with no armor save. So this can be pretty bad. Uh, you know, over the course of the game, of course, that means you're just gonna be taking, on average, one wound from this. It's not like a one or a two from the fell blade. So it's not that bad, but it's something you have to keep in mind. And remember, it just says no armor saves. So if you're set up with Tzinch and you already have an awesome ward save, well, you probably don't care about that anyway. Uh, Bolt of Change, just kind of a fluffy thing they've had here for a long time, where if you ever kill a monster or a character on a 4+, plus, they turn into a spawn. Sure, <laughs> you know, it's... I, I'd never see something like this worthwhile. It's just kind of a gimmicky thing. So really, it's only for a, a fluffy army. Uh, then you have a Filth Mace. This one has to be on somebody with the Mark of Nurgle. Uh, you get poison attacks, and then as soon as you kill somebody, you have the Terror Rule, and then you're also going to have it so it has a D3 <coughs> uh, Wound Special Rule. So it's something where you have to do a wound first for it to get even better. So unless you have it set up where you can kill some Chaff Unit or something, Normally what happens is that your initial engagement, especially with a big character like this, is going to be your main main engagement. And so if you already don't have the bonuses by then, it's probably too late. So 
I, I'm really not a fan of that one either. Uh, Helm of Many Eyes. This one is pretty awesome. It gives you, just kind of like before, always strikes first and stupidity. And of course, whenever you want to be really killy like you are in Wars of Chaos, that's a very good way to go. Then we get to Skull of Kadem. Uh, this is going to be an arcane item. And what this one does here is that instead of channeling one dice, you can choose to roll six dice. So on average, you're going to be channeling every single turn. However, for every one you roll, you reduce your leadership by one, and once you get to zero, you're dead. So for the most part, on average, this means that for a fairly low investment, you're getting one more power dice every single phase, and over the course of the game, you're going to lose six leadership, and with that, normally all your guys are you know leadership eight or so so you're still gonna be alive so it's only if you have a really rough game with rolling lots of ones it might kill you but for the most car, uh, case it's just kinda of more of a, a free dice every turn so it can be again this is arcane so it's a thing where a dispel scroll would be best if you have a second guy you could always go with this sure why not uh, then you have a chalice of chaos this one here is you have a, a one-time thing where you use this potion, it can give you something crazy, and it's just kind of a real mixed bag of everything, where it can be a 5 plus ward, uh, killing blow, just all these different things, where it's like, well, again, if you have the points, you could throw it in and all this stuff, but then again, it could also be bad, where you could take a wound with no saves of any kind. So really, it, it almost seems like this should be an orc and goblin item, because it's so wacky and crazy, but, uh, you know, again, if you're kind of go fluffy, or if you have some extra points, Sure, throw it in so you have some little bonus for your critical combat. Uh, Pendant of Slanesh. Now this one here is, is 50 points, so it's a really big chunk. And now I've just said a point thing. But anyway, um, what this gives you here is that you take your break test on a D6 rather than a 2D6. So for the most part, this is almost like being stubborn. So the Stubborn Crown is cheaper. However, if you want to have two stubborn units, this is also another, another great one to have in there where you know, pretty much for the most case, unless you're losing by tons, which you shouldn't be, you're just going to be fine, because your D6 leadership test will be just fine. Uh, the other thing, too, is that for every wound that uh, you suffer yourself, you get plus one attack. Again, I don't like things that depend on you dying to get a benefit, but at least there's a little something bonus in there as well. Uh, Blasted Standard's also in here. It changed. Instead of being a ward save, which then of course can be augmented when you have with the Tzinch, what this is, is that now you can only take it with Tzinch, and then it reduces all shooting by half. So, pretty awesome. I mean, of course, you're being hit by cannons. It's still strength 5, but even then, I mean, then there's only wounding you on a 3+, plus and all that stuff. But the other thing is, if you ever roll a 1, then it's doubled in strength. So, all of a sudden, arrows are strength 6. So, kind of an interesting thing that they have thrown in there. Probably worth it still on your main unit just to make sure that you're not going to be decimated by war machines and it's fairly cheap too and you can take it on your warrior unit so why not if you're to Zinch. Uh, last one is a banner of rage has to be corn just like before you have corn uh, frenzy forever and can't lose it so that's pretty awesome and I gotta go deal something so I'll be right back. Alright so we're back. Uh, this is kind of like the second part of this now and it actually is really an orc tactical team because we finally have a team. Uh, we have my brother here, and what tag are you going to go with? Oh, Borgnine's fine. Alright, so whenever you heard me before talking about my brother Borgnine or games, this is the one my other brother doesn't play. And he actually just got into Warriors of Chaos, so he's kind of seeing it from that perspective, and uh, I'm seeing it from mine. And so yeah, we're just going to go through it. We've already talked about a few things, but we're just going to kind of jump into it now with the actual units, now that we covered the other stuff. So with the Lords, there's only the three to really think about. There's the Chaos Lord, the Sorcerer Lord, and then the Demon Prince. So any thoughts on those guys? I think the Demon Prince is really cool. Just with all the shenanigans stuff you can give him. Yeah, and like we did a little bit of talking before this, but I mean, for my part, the way I see it is that you got your Sorcerer Lord, which is going to be your one plus choice because you're going to have that magic, you want to have the level four, and he's just amazing for the points. It's the same thing as before, it's like compared to the Chaos Lord, where I mean, between the two, you might as well have magic and be decent as well. But uh, I don't know, like to me, the Demon Prince kind of shows a good thing with the Chaos Lord, where sometimes people like monsters, but they don't like to take them because they can be killed. And so, just like with the Ogre Tyrant. I like the Chaos Lord because if you just take your monster, take those points, 
and then use them towards a Chaos Lord, you have the same killing potential, but it's safe from cannons, as opposed to a Demon Prince who's not. So, but you still really like him? Just a bit of a quick clarification. If he's a, if it says he's a character, does that mean, that doesn't mean he can join units, does it? For the, well, he's a, uh, he's a monster as well, so monsters okay. can't join. Okay, so it doesn't matter if he's a character. But no. I don't know. I think people always say that there's cannons. Yeah, there's a lot of armies that don't have cannons. You know? I think you pretty much have to assume now, especially with ogres being out there. What do you mean you have to assume? What if you're playing any of the elves? What if you're playing, you know, like... Even if you are fighting elves, I mean, then you're gonna at least gonna see, you know, bolt throwers and stuff and doing a D3 wounds and... So... Only toughness, five. They're, they're pr you're probably gonna be long range, even if you're not. You know, they're hitting on threes, wounding on threes. You can, you know, you've got a five plus save, and then doing D three wounds. It's a whole thing where you're going to a tournament. You should be expecting ogre kingdoms, empire, dwarves, and then uh, also skaven, and then you also have all the the, the rock throwers as well, yeah, right? Stone throwers are a pain in the ass. That's for sure. Yeah, <laughs> D six wounds hurt. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I think it's still at least something you can do as characterful. <clears throat> One of the things that you were talking about is going with one with a two plus save, rerollable. You know, yeah, because kind of you can take Chaos Armor, then take that uh, Hardened Skin, I think it's called, for an additional plus two to your save, and then take Dawnstone with your Magic Item Allowance. Mm -hmm. So I think if you can get into combat, you know, he'll stick around. I mean, he's straight up unbreakable now. It's not like he's got the Demon Instability or anything. Mm -hmm. So I guess your your whole thing is the question whether he'll make it into combat, though. Yeah, and it's the whole thing. That's your whole... Uh, idea of getting him into combat and grinding things down, you could do the same thing with a Chaos Lord, and but have him safe. Is it a stubborn crown? Yeah, or he'll just be winning combat, so you don't care about a stubborn crown. Especially if he's with a unit or whatever, right? But Man, it's got a lot of points. 210. Well, it's 235 for the Demon Prince. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so that, I guess that's kind of the thing there where, I mean, some people will like the Demon Prince. If I was to play them, I would have one just because of in case it came up, but I don't think I'd ever take one. In case you turn one of your own guys into a Demon Prince, yeah, you just have to have it available. Pretty much. Uh, going on to heroes, I mean, we're not touching on the special characters, so that's really just the Exalted Hero and the Chaos Sorcerer. And, I mean, for my part, I mean, you've played a few games where you kind of missed uh, the having the BSB looking yeah. this year, do you think you'd really go with it? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I mean, depends on the points, of well, course. I mean, the guys don't have Will of Chaos anymore, so they're not re rolling any of their break tests or anything. Mm -hmm. You know, your standard guys, so. Uh, I, the problem is, I really haven't played very much, right? I played like the two games, and it makes it challenging to make a statement like that, but. I think it can definitely help. I mean, for my part, I'm always a person that really cuts short on uh, characters. Yeah. And especially in an elite army like this, I don't know if I'd even go with the BSB. Maybe. Uh, maybe I mean, it depends on which way you're going. I'm definitely not a fan of going with a support uh, hero level character. Right. For the uh, wizards. I mean, I just always go with the one level four. <clears throat> but I mean, there is a lot of good items out there, like we talked about, that you can be using with those heroes. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, let's talk about some of these mounts because one of the things I really like about these characters is that I had talked about before about how I love the really old Orc and Goblin book where there's basically a page of mounts that you could actually take. And they kind of brought this back. It's a whole section where it says for all these characters, if you want a mount, look at this page. And it lists them all down here with the Bardic Chaos Deed, the Cetus Lanesh, Disc of Tazinj, Demonic Mount. Uh, Palaquin of Nurgle, Juggernaut of Corn, uh, Chaos Chariot, Chaos War Shrine, Gore Beast Chariot, Manticore, and uh, Chaos Dragons. Just those last two have to be on a Lord, but I mean, you have those options for all of these things. Uh, just to kind of throw it out there, just one thing I'm sure is going to be FAQ'd is the whole thing that a Chaos Steed right now is a War Beast. So if you go and you mount your Lord onto, you know, your make him a knight, you put him with your regular Chaos Knights, he can give you ca uh, cannon sniped. You actually have to put him with your dogs in order to give him the, the lookout, sir. But, uh, Borg Knight, what do you think about these mounts here? Uh, 
I think uh, when we were chatting a little bit earlier, you came up with a good uh, point on how the Palankpin and Nurgle could be really good on a, on a hero level, boosting up his uh, toughness. It's a whole thing for the demonic mount as well, because I mean that one that is boosting your toughness up to five, yeah. could give your hero up to you know three wounds as well. And uh, one of the things you can do is because this is monstrous beast for these things, is that you could be joining them with your uh, dragon ogres so that if you're like going up a flank, first turn you get to look out, sir, then you can be charging out. And I mean, you have the, you know, the, the stubborn crown you could be having on him, you could yeah. be having that new uh, Slanesh one if you're going with him so that you're doing your break test on a D6. So you can just hold up something forever, but. Uh, you know, it's good that you can actually put into something where he's going to be getting a lookout, sir, for. And did you notice the they increase the killing power of the disc? No. It actually has like three attacks at strength four now or something like that. No, well, it's It something. used to have one attack and now it's got three. I don't know. Is that going to make a difference? I don't know. But. One of the things I, I see here is that you can actually put something on the Chaos War Shrine. I don't know why you'd ever bother to do that. I think it's just like the Empire thing where you can put them on the Hurricaneum and stuff, which is kind of just for looks. Mm -hmm. So. But I mean, the nice thing here is that it really seems like, just like with the Orc and Goblin book, that you can have more themed armies than you could before. I mean, if you want to have a chariot army, go for it. If you want to have a monster army, go for it. And especially with your characters here, I mean, you can just do that stuff now, whereas you couldn't do it before. Yeah, I like giving four wounds to a hero with the Mark of Nurgle. By mm. putting him on that flank, but that sounds pretty cool. And then, of course, through the lore, like we were talking about, you can always be getting more. Yeah. And then you have a hero with six wounds or whatever after a couple of rounds of magic. All right, so let's get to the core units. I think we already kind of we covered those, the, the heroes and stuff pretty well. I mean, it's pretty simple. They're not very different from how they were, right? Yeah. It'll be interesting to see how, if you run a demon prince, how he, how he does. <laughs> how quickly he dies. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> All right, so core units. And in the core units, you actually got uh, a new interesting thing here. So now you got your chaos warriors, your marauders, Forsaken, uh, Warhounds, Chariot, and Horsemen. Uh, and so the nice thing here is that this is now the second army that can actually take Chariots as core, and uh, you know, Beastman's the other one. And the thing is here is that they have really good Chariots. So whereas like, if you compare it to my Boar Chariots, I'll have a four plus armor save, mm -hmm. I'll have four strength five attacks on the charge, but after that I only have four strength three attacks, oh, okay. and that's it. These guys here have a 3 plus armor save, they'll have the 4 strength 5, add a higher weapon skill and they charge in, and then they still have the steeds to attack, and the thing is that that doesn't change. Every round of combat they'll have this. Yeah. So whereas if I charge in a unit of say, 3 wolf chariots or 2 boar chariots, I'm going to hit hard, they're going to be steadfast, and then I'm screwed. These guys, you could charge in a couple of them, and they could grind down a unit actually. And hold their own. Yeah, as long as they can keep up the kills. Yeah. Uh, Warhounds, you know, they're fairly solid. Horsemen, I think we both agree we don't like them. <laughs> well, personally, I just don't like them because they seem to be just like the Hellstriders, but kind of worse. Yeah. You know, like the Hellstriders just, for a, a couple more points, if any, like they just seem like they're a lot faster, so... The only way I can see running them is if you're doing like a theme list again, right? So it's going to be yeah. all cap. Yeah. And the other thing too is if you're using them as a delivery system for your mounted characters, assuming they FAQ it so they actually get a lookout sir with them. Yeah. But otherwise, you know, you can run around and throw silly javelins and stuff, but I mean, it that doesn't really do much and it's a lot of points. As opposed to the Warhounds, which is still your nice cheap thing where I think like every army is going to have two to four units of these guys. They're extremely cheap. Yeah. Uh, so of course now we got our, our let's talk, let's talk about the warriors and marauders and the big thing here and I, I mean you're not happy because marauders I'm pissed yeah they got nerfed big time which I mean they were overly good last time most po point efficient unit in the game and uh, I mean now it's it's way the other way it's it's hard to defend them I was for a while until I saw some stuff and I was like yeah because the now that one of the things I didn't touch on before is that with the marks, instead of paying for a mark for a unit, you pay for a mark per model. So obviously now, trying to add on mark of corn to your unit of 50 marauders, that's going to be a lot of points. That makes sense though too. It does. And it's the way it should have been. Um, but the other thing here too is that the upgrades, in order to give them the great weapons or flails, or even on the, the Chaos Warriors as well, for the halberds and all their things, 
it went up quite a bit. And so it's, it's a pretty significant increase if you ever want to give any different type of weapon. So it was seeming to me that you just don't want to upgrade these guys. You know, if you're going to take Marauders, they're probably going to be just like your bunker in the back, just completely naked. And then for your Warriors, again, just hand weapon shield. Probably, we were talking about how we both like Mark and Nurgle, and then just grind stuff down. You're only strength four, but then you can reduce their toughness. Or if anything else, it seems like they're just kind of an attrition type army. Anything else you want to be thrown in with that? I hate Marauders. Yeah. <laughs> again, another thing I thought about with Marauders is again something with like a character delivery system. Because if you're just going to have characters in the front row, who cares who's in the back? Who's behind? Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, that'd be another reason why you could put in Marauders. So you're going to rock five or five Chaos characters? Absolutely. That's a lot of points, man. It's also really good. <laughs> what characters would that be? Just heroes. Just regular exalted. Yeah. Huh. Okay. But we'll get there when we get to the war shrine. <laughs> oh, I gotcha. Okay. So yeah, I mean, uh, one of the things I, I want to touch on too is that I mean, you you probably want to have your unit of twenty warriors there in case you get the the watchtower. Um, you know, obviously you could make them bigger, you can go even hoard with uh, Chaos Wars if you want, but then of course it's a lot of points. And mm -hmm. the nice thing now, of course, too, is that if you ever, you know, you took your units that you wanted, you took your dogs, and you're still not your 25%, just throw in some chariots, and that's a great support unit just to fill in your core. And Warriors actually got cheaper if you're giving them hand weapon shield, right? So that's interesting. And course, I didn't notice that, yeah. Well, they, they uh, used to be one point more if okay. they just had shields. It's the uh, great weapons and halberds that went up. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, it also depends on how many guys you have in the unit, because it's a point per model basis. But because of warrior units are generally pretty small anyway, so that's a fairly trivial dis difference. And then they drop the costs on upgrades to command group. Yeah. So it it can turn out that they're actually, you know, cheaper, mm -hmm. which is good. Uh, so then we go to the special, and they have a lot. Oh, we, we can't leave Core yet. We haven't talked about Forsaken. <laughs> so, what do you think about Forsaken? I hate them. You hate them? <laughs> okay, well, I mean, I'm very tempted to dislike them first off because because of being from Canada, they're $60 for 10 guys. So, you could convert them. You could convert them from. <laughs> well, yeah, there you got all these marauders now kicking around that are useless. So, you, <laughs> you can convert them from that. Hands coming over to heads, whatever. But, uh,. I don't know, yeah, they frenzied. Chaos armor is nice. They used to just have heavy armor. Mm -hmm. They are only weapon skill 4, because they're supposed yep. to be like crazy marauders, or, Ye even though they have somehow chaos armor. Oh, I think they're, aren't they just like retarded chaos warriors or something? <laughs> I, I, don't I don't know. know. This yeah. was my thoughts on them, is that I actually can see myself field them, fielding them now. Okay. And the reason why I'd be doing that is because they are very fast. I mean, they got the movement 6, so they yeah. can get up the board fairly quick. But the nice thing is, I mean, if you just took a unit of five with no upgrades, we're under 100 points. Yep. And this is a unit that's going to be having two to four attacks each. I mean, you could always give the, the core an upgrade. Now you are slightly over 100 points for five. But this is just kind of like a throwaway unit that's just going to be trashing other throwaway units. And it could also be rushing around to get to war machines, could be threatening flanks. I mean, you could always make them more serious. I never would hoard them or anything like that. But I mean, going up to, you know, seven, eight, is just something that can sweep around a flank, kill off whatever, you know, fast cab is there, and then be getting to flanks and stuff. Because, I mean, with Toughness 4 and a 4 plus armor, they're going to survive stuff. And, I mean, going back with that many attacks, it's a lot of killing power. Do you think with Frenzy, though, they're not going to be able to accomplish what you want them to accomplish? Because of being, like, baited and all that? It can be. But, I mean, one of the things I'm saying is that this is almost one of your throwaway units. Yeah. So, if they're baiting you, you're still killing what you're aiming at. Yeah, it's actually interesting. Yeah, just five guys. Basically, like these are these are your almost like fast cab kind of guys. Get them. <laughs> yeah, that actually, that's an interesting application. I like that. So interesting. I mean, one of those things where uh, it's almost like the Orc and Goblin book, where there's just a whole bunch of stuff you can use, right? There's some some stuff that looks like better than others, but for the most part, you can really take a vast amount of things, and they look really good. I think uh, also just one more thing is like it seems like there's going to be a lot of push with this to go for a very fast army. 
with this new book because just there's a lot of more faster things you can take and if you wanted to have infantry that could really keep up these guys can do it mm -hmm. so well, I don't know if it'd be a fat, but it's definitely something where there's more possibilities. Like the way that I see this, it's like the Orc and Goblin book, where you, there's, whereas before in the old book, it's like, well, you're going to have your big blocks of warriors and marauders, you're yeah. going to have your flying disc guy, you're going to have your hell cannon, and the game is just going to go the same way all the time. Whereas with this, there's several different builds. You know, now if I go up against Warriors of Chaos, I don't know what I'll be up against. But uh, getting to specials, they now have three pages of those. Uh, the things in here is they have the Hell Striders, they have the Chosen, the Chaos Knights, the Chaos Ogres, the Dragon Ogres, the Chaos Trolls, the Chimera, which is new, Gore Beast, new uh, Chariot, and then also the War Shrine. Uh, anything that stands up to you that you want to jump on first? Well, I'm going to sound like a really negative person here, I think. <laughs> but I, I really didn't think the Chaos Knights had to go up in points. Because now they don't come with the ensorcelled weapons for free. You gotta pay for them. It's not a big price, but it's just kind of the principle that they. I don't think they had to go up, but they pretty much do just what they did before. Um, it's cool how the the trolls went down. They're basically now regular ogre mm -hmm. and goblin trolls, and uh, I think I think the chimera could be really cool. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, this is like touching on those three things myself. Uh, with the Chaos Knights, I like the fact that they do make it so you could run them naked because a lot of times you don't need that scrolled weapon or the Strength 5. All you need is the 1 plus armor save, get in there and grind stuff down. And like I was saying before, where this army, to me, could be a real attrition army, that's a big thing Knights can be. And you don't always need to be paying that extra points to be having scrolled weapons. I also like that lances are cheaper. So it actually pushes you more, as opposed to before, where lances were more expensive. Yeah. But I mean, they used to have ensorcelled weapons for free. Yeah. And so now you're, you know, oh, we have the option of being crappier for the same points. Well, I don't see that as a benefit. Well, the big thing is, is like, forget the old book. Like, this is the new reality, right? <laughs> like, and I, I still see people taking chaos knights, just because I mean, you got a, a one plus save, killy unit just running mm -hmm. up there, right? Same thing, right? Take your, your min unit of five, and you're only looking at a 200 point unit that you can just smash stuff around. It's not that cheap. Yeah, it's not that cheap, but they can deal with a lot of stuff, right? I mean, just throw that into a block. There's very little chance they're going to be dying. Well, I mean, they'll be slowly. Uh, it's away. just a matter of time. I, I've, yeah. I've noticed. It seems to be just, yeah, they hit the block. They do some damage, but it's just a matter of time before you're rolling those ones and they're gone. Yeah, but I mean, so many times that I've seen in my games where people take, say, a unit of seven, or they even go bigger and take ten or something, and they just smash into a block and they just grind me down oh, or grind me down. If you got ten units, ten guys, that's a different story than yeah. five. That's a lot of attacks now. Yeah. But, I mean, even like, yeah, when there's like the six or something that hits me, it's like, oh, well, you know, if I don't do it with me being an orc with the choppas, mm -hmm. then... I'm not going to get you. Uh, the other one there was a Chaos Trolls. I think that's amazing. Uh, just like with Orcs and Goblins, I'd be tempted to be running hordes of these guys. You know, they're, they're so good. Are you really concerned, though, that their vomit isn't magical anymore? <laughs> that You know, that is a big change and something where, I mean, when you're dealing with vampire accounts, uh, something you have to keep in mind. Of course, if you're running skull crushers, then of course now you have new magical weapons. You have magical weapons in different places when you're yeah. Wars of Chaos, but uh, they do have the new upgrade where you can take an additional Hatton weapon for a few extra points. But the thing is, there, I don't know if I'd take it, because if, if you're running a small unit, then sure. Yeah. But I usually take these things, you know, go big or go home. And at that point, you're not getting that, that extra attack in the back ranks. Yeah, only the front ranks, so you're paying way too many points if it's a horde unit. But yeah, if you're running three, you know, three, six guys, whatever, I think you could. Yeah. You could go for that for sure. Uh, then you're also, we're touching on the Chimera. Uh, that one there, I think it can be interesting. I mean, with only four wounds, it can die fairly easy. You can always pay to give it uh, regeneration, which I think would be an automatic. Uh, mm -hmm. Absolutely. The, the Flaming Breath is one where it's like, uh, It's expensive. It's expensive, but it also, I mean, where you're really trying to work on that attrition, that's something that could really get in there and break that steadfast or something. But it's, uh, I don't know which way I'd go with that. Probably not bother, but I mean, yeah. If you're running on a flank, he can do all right. Well, I mean, if when you got that regeneration, if they're not strength four, you got two four plus saves. Like he's not going to be easy to put down. Yeah, depends what it is. 
I'd just be worried about one cannon going through the regen and then... Uh, well, how many cannons do you think these guys have? You're, you're saying that, you know, if you've got a Demon Prince and this guy, you're starting to have to take, make choices now. Well, okay, that's that's a whole thing too. Like, that's another theme. Like, this is special. We're all of a sudden we have this roaming monster in here. So this is almost like Tomb Kings, where you can run a monster army. You know, and you can start doing that. Like, well, you have two cannons, but I have six monsters. So what are you going to do? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. First, I'm going to kill the general first, but... <laughs> the general demon prince? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, one of the things that r relates well with trolls is also the chaos ogres. Because, you know, really, depending on what you give them, they're kind of the same points. Uh, overall, though, trolls are just better because they are the extra strength. They have the regen rather than the, the heavy armor. And, you know, they have the option for puke. The big difference is the stupidity. So it's a thing to me where if I had to take one, I would take trolls. But if I had to take something that was on a flank, then, okay, then you got your chaos ogres. And they can do their thing. So you'd rather have them than, uh, like, the dragon ogres? Well, they're half the cost. So... <laughs> uh, how about we get to dragon ogres then, since you touched on them? Okay. So you love them. you got two boxes. Well, yeah. <laughs> I, I got the, there's a pre-order deal that I got on, it was big sale, so I had no idea what the rules were or anything. Mm -hmm. So I ordered two boxes, and they're, uh, they're expensive. I'd heard rumors that they were going to be going down in points pretty substantially. Mm -hmm. Apparently that was wrong. So the only thing I do like about them is, is how strong they can get. So, I mean, with their great weapons, they'll be strength 7. Yeah. And so when you start seeing a lot of these Morn Fangs and stuff out there now, and Skull Crushers from other armies, um, you know, if you get these guys into the flank of one of those, yeah. they're going to tear it open. So, I mean, of course, you're going to have to really control the movement phase with your dogs and everything in order to make that yeah. happen. But the other thing, too, like I was touching on before, is that these guys are also a very good thing if you're already taking them to kind of get that synergy so you have that guy on the demonic mount who yeah. can join with them for the first turn to move up, avoid that first cannon shot, and then charge out type thing. And they do have four wounds each. So even yeah. though it looks kind of sad with only, uh, what is it, they work out to a four plus armor on toughness four, yeah. at least they can soak with quite a few hits before they start going down. That's nice. Well, and weapon skill four is nice too. A lot yeah. of these... A lot of these kind of monstrous infantry guys don't have that, so that that can that can help for sure. You gonna hoard these guys? That's one difference between like these guys and say you know, the demi griffs or the skull crushers that you get all these attacks, right? It's not like well you don't get the juggernauts and stuff going back, and they only get the the supporting attack. Oh. That's only points. You'd never be. That's able to well, do that. okay. First <laughs> off, there's that, but second off, you say, oh yeah, well you don't have the juggernauts attacking, but. The regular riders of the Juggernauts have just as many attacks as these guys do anyway. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah. No, I think obviously you would not hoard these guys <laughs> at at uh, <laughs> at that point's cost. No. Uh, let's finish the stuff on these things here. So, how about we go to the Gore Beast Chariot? Yeah. Uh, this one here, you know, it is more points than the the core one obviously you do get a little bit tougher your toughness six now you have killing blow on your impact hits which is kind of cute you have, um you have another wound too don't you uh yeah you have another wound so that's nice too so it's something that's you know kind of interesting overall i would you know always go for the core one first because it's really going to do the job anyway I don't really think the Killing Blow Impact hits will normally come up and really matter. It's really if you're doing that Chariot theme, then I'd really be going for it. Uh, the regular Chariot doesn't cause fear, does it? Well, fear is... Hey, man. It can. That, in the like last two games, that has completely screwed me over. Where I, I failed a key fear check, and that was like game over. Well... Hey, look. My chosen star is hitting your giant on fives now. Hey, we're totally screwed. Giants are tough. <laughs> no, and I'm just saying, uh, like, fear. Sh here's that's... something on chariots. No matter which one is, would you ever bother giving them a mark? Well, how did how does mark of corn interact with a chariot? Do you Everything just get the one it. attack, or is it every element gets? Well, it? the thing is that when it was said for the war shrine, it says everything gets it. So one would assume then. It said that for the war shrine. Yeah. Or one of them has said that it goes to everything. I think it was a war shrine. Okay, okay. I didn't know that. Uh, 
to me, I could see putting on the market corn on these things. If you're getting it for every element, that's a lot of bonus attacks, especially on the regular chair, four extra attacks. Like and the that. nice thing too is, I mean, if this thing is forced to overrun, usually it's overrunning anyway because chariots don't like to get charged themselves, so mm -hmm. you're probably going for it. Um, I think that sounds good. Now let's talk about the War Shrine, because this thing changed a lot. Uh, before you could beef up units, uh, now you can't, you can only beef up characters. It also became a bound uh, spell as well. The other thing is that now it's a chariot that doesn't have swift stride and doesn't have impact hits. So it's kind of a weird thing, but personally I think this is something where it could really come in handy. And this is where I kept on bringing up the, the character buses before, mm -hmm. because one of the things you could do is if you ran that where it was like a block of 30 marauders completely naked, five characters in the front, and you had this thing falling around, every single turn, I mean, first of all, without anything else, that unit is going to be devastating and could run through a lot of things all by itself. Now, if you have this thing, and you're, you're throwing out that bounce spell, all of them will be affected on it. They'll get the 3d6, so they're going to get something awesome, and then your opponent will be forced to dispel it. So pretty much, you know, if you're looking at a normal breakdown of your seven dice to their four, you throw out two dice, they might have to throw out their entire four to stop it, because they, they can't let it go through. Otherwise, that unit just becomes insane. Well, that's permanent, right? It's permanent. That's, that's a big difference here, is it's you can't affect units anymore, but it gives permanent buffs to yep. units. And all of your Eye of the Gods in there, regardless of whether it's given from the War Shrine, you get your 3d6. Yeah. So, so you like it just to steal away basically the opponent's spell dice. Yeah, forcing them to do that, and then it just kind of like synergizes with that whole character delivery system. Something I kind of seen people chatting about on the internet was, uh, taking a bunch of small units of like 10 marauders with the champion and then just surrounded by like a couple of war shrines oh, okay. and then just boom slam these things through and try and just get as many rolls as you can and just try and get demon princes. Oh I guess so. I mean if you get spawns it's not that bad right? It's no. Worth it. so, spawns are pretty good. <laughs> and I mean where you are talking about what even running a demon prince right? If you're going to do that you might as well do this too and beef them up right? I mean, all of a sudden, if your Demon Prince is tough to six or whatever... Or you can get bonuses to his invulnerable save. Yeah, you have a one-plus re-rollable save now. Mm. So, I know I think I know a lot of people didn't like it. I think it still has its uses. I think at, I think at the point price point, it's interesting to put in there. I think, I think at, you know, 2,500 points or so, I think it's fairly easy to fit in. I think I, I could see that happening. I gotta say though, I was pretty uh, miffed that there wasn't like super attacks from the ogres in the bottom. I think that's really stupid. You know, they made this model, like these huge ogres carrying this thing, and then it's like, yeah, we're strength four. I guess yeah. the ogres are strength four, but you, those guys look like they could do a lot of These damage. things are carrying like a boat. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Did you, uh, it's interesting too, just for anyone who isn't like looking at the book or anything, it actually went down in its toughness too. Mm-hmm. Uh, it turned to a cherry instead of instead of uh, like an infantry kind of unit like so it's movement six instead of four Yep. so it's it's just very different how it moves it can't march all that stuff uh, the other ones on the other side okay so we already kind of touched on chaos knights uh, there's the house riders at the top where uh, I think you already said that I can't remember if this was before or during this recording here that comparing them to horsemen you mm -hmm. know it's just so many more points the thing that could be nice for them is if there is a real key target that you need to get around and take out. I mean, it's one thing to take out a goblin bolt thrower, but if it's something else, say like a uh, trebuchet. Well, a trebuchet. I was going to say even more, like say like a dwarven anvil, where you need to hit it with something more significant. Well, all of a sudden you could be putting a character with these guys mm. and get right up there. One of the problems that we were talking about it though is that, I mean, if you ever saw this coming and saw your opponent had this, you're going to deploy to make it so that, that they can't sneak past you. So even though you're super fast, it's really hard to get around. But I mean, it really depends on the point levels and the terrain and all that stuff. Movement 10, fast cap, you don't think you could get around things pretty easily? Well, I mean, my, my typical orcs when we were doing, let's say, like 2500 before I started going to support units was board edge to board yeah. edge, right? So, but when, you, when you've when you seen other people you play against, that isn't normally the case. I mean, the one thing, like, we're, my example was dwarves. So if you're up against yeah. dwarves, then you're casting in a corner, right? And I mean, you're just not going to get through anywhere. So I think they're a fairly weak choice. 
But I mean, if you're doing a theme army or if it's a big game, you could put in a unit of them. But I, I'm really not a fan whatsoever. I'm not a huge fan of the models, unfortunately. Now, one that I know that we kind of differ on is the Chosen. So the Chosen are kind of like the Chaos Warriors, except for a four points a model, you get an extra weapon skill, you get the roll on the Eye of the Gods on the first thing, and also for some reason their shields are more expensive. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, I guess they're forcing you to be more offensive there. But to me, I actually see Chosen as a possibility. I mean, I'd always go to Warriors first, but if we're talking like 25, 3,000 points, I could see a unit of these guys, because especially because I see that new Eye of the Gods table as being better, these guys can pretty, be pretty awesome. Like in our game, where your guys had Toughness 5 Chosen, that's a big deal. And all of a sudden, when you're looking at the four points, the four points for having an extra Toughness and an extra Weapon skill can be pretty big. That's a pretty ideal situation, though, that you're yeah. getting the toughness one. Or if you get plus one ballistic skill. <laughs> I don't even know why that's even in there. I don't know. <laughs> Unless you're that Marauder Horseman champion who somehow killed someone. Because he's got a throwing axe. Yeah. <laughs> Which he somehow killed a monster with. Yeah. Well, no, any champion. I don't know. Like, he could have been in a challenge, killed a champion, and then now he's, now he's walking around throwing axes at guys. I don't know. I don't know why they did that. <laughs> But anyway, I mean, obviously you were saying you don't like them at all, right? Yeah, they're so expensive. I don't know. It's a lead army. I mean, well, I mean, one of the things I was talking about is it was kind of a, an army of attrition. But one of the things you could do here to keep these guys alive, of course, even if you go offensive with them, is the whole Nurgle thing like we're talking about again. Mm -hmm. Where they're going to have Mark and Nurgle, you're going to be trying to cast that spell so that, you know, all of a sudden they're hitting you on sixes and then it's not so bad. Or maybe your toughness is higher. So you would just take Halberds on them in terms of gear? Uh, I might you, also go Shields, but I mean, if you're going to be going to make these guys the offensive guys, it would either be Halberds or Shields. So if you were to go shields, yeah. you're looking at five points a model more for these guys over warriors for the one weapon skill and the one roll on the table. Well, the other thing too is, I mean, think you get the, the shields and then you get the thing you get a better armor save, right? You're looking at pretty awesome. If you roll that, you would get a pretty darn good save, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's... The problem is that now it's not until after deployment that you find out what they have. Which so. also means you can't use the War Shrine. Because oh, what I was originally thinking is, okay, yeah, you put this by the War Shrine, then you actually have four dice you get to roll. Oh, okay. You know, but then you can't you can't use that, unfortunately, because yeah. it's for deployment. So again, like I said, I think I normally you go with the Warriors first, especially because they're also core. But I mean, I, I can definitely see people taking Chosen and it being valid. I stick with Warriors. Yeah. Uh, who would you say is the biggest loser in the special? You. Okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, Striders. You really don't like the Striders. Sorry, I'm just looking. There's through lots this here. of them. There are a lot of them. Maybe I guess I guess the Hell Striders. So it's actually quite a few good choices. There is it, again, like Orcs and Goblins, where there's lots of good specials, and like Orcs and the Goblins, my favorite is Trolls. Mm. Yeah, I, actually, I might even just say then that it's the Dragon Ogres are the biggest losers just because Chaos Trolls are so much cheaper. <laughs> you know, that it's like, man, do you really want to take those Dragon Ogres? I don't know. Then again, the way that you roll your leadership tests. Ooh. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, too. Is it's, remember that in the, it's it can be harder to get that BSB in there for Warriors of Chaos than it is for Orcs and Goblins. Yeah. So I don't know if that's something you need to keep in consideration. I like my cheap Night Goblin BSB. He's I awesome. I bet you do. All right, so now we're finally onto rares, and we have the Hell Cannon, we have the Dragon Ogre Sagoth, we have the Chaos Giant, we have the Chaos Spawn, we have the Skull Crushers, the Slaughter Brute, and the Vortex Beast. So again, I'll, anything you want to talk about first? No. Okay. Let's just go in order. Let's go in order. <laughs> Hell Cannon, it's again, if you want to have a real shooting element, this is going to be your way to go. Uh, one of the synergies is not there anymore as you don't have the leadership banner. So, I mean, mm. you, you can still do the whole thing where you can do Doom and Darkness or do Slanesh and make them take their tests on 3d6, drop the lowest. Or the Zinch one. 
Or the Z Leader, one. Lowest leadership with no no rerolls. But it, that that's just doing a unit now. So it's like. Uh, well, it's, it shoot at that unit though. Yeah. Use the magic on them. Shoot at that unit. They're in trouble. Yeah, but it's just, it's not as it's just a little bit of that synergy is gone there. Sure. But it's one of those things where it's also what I saw is that it's. He, I don't know, I maybe didn't do much of the Hellcan before, but it seemed like they just table change, so it's eating more of its handlers oh, now. Wait, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I see it still has the miscast thing, but the miscast thing is limited to two feet, which generally means it's only going to be your own guy's miscasting now. So that it's, was it's pretty similar though, right? Yeah, it's it's fairly similar. So the big thing here is if you want to have shooting in your army, you take this thing. I mean, they, yeah, they didn't change it away from being like it's still a monster. It's still a monster. So you still randomize with the handlers whenever you shoot it. It's got a five plus ward save now. Mm. That's nice, isn't it? So now it's a, a legit five plus ward save, whereas before it was a five plus handler ward save. So <laughs> well, it's got both now, right? Yeah, now it's both. So I mean, it's it's definitely something you can be throwing in there. Uh, <laughs> Dragon Ogre Slagoth. Do you see anything good about it? It got a lot cheaper, didn't it? I don't. I, I don't know. I thought it was like two hundred eighty before. I live in the now, man. I don't know. <laughs> I I honestly think it's a great model. Well, Does that count for anything, model. Brian? Or maybe Malorian? more uh, whatever. <laughs> I've already said that one before. But uh, you know, it's it's all right. The biggest thing to me is just just it doesn't really have much to it. It's just eh. at least the only nicest thing I could say about it is six wounds. Yeah. Of all the monsters in the book, apart from like the giant, it's the one up there that has six wounds rather than the five. Or if you're looking at the Chimera and stuff, just four. Yeah. So yeah. at least you have that. You can go for the really big hit where you're going with your strength eight, and you know if you're trying to crack some other monsters and stuff, that'd be a really good way to go. It's got a nice weapon skill too, right? Actually, I mean that's his 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 point in the army. Give him a, a great weapon, and he's your anti monster. Because you're not worried about thunder stomps either way. That doesn't matter. It's just you wounding other monsters in a two plus with your five attacks. I don't know, it. man. At, at 215, I think he's pretty. I think he's reasonably good. I mean, you, you got to pay a little bit more for the great weapon still, but that's pretty cheap, isn't it? For it it's decent. It's decent. I, I mean, compared to some other stuff. Well, and just think of his his immunity to lightning stuff, and like that's really big. Yeah, there's a lot of lightning up there. I don't know. <laughs> uh, next one is the Chaos Giant. And to me, I see it as a 215 one as well, because I see, I, I automatically, I give it the, the Giant of Nurgle. No question about it. Yeah, Toughness 6 Giant, God, I wish I'd have that. I mean, it has the whole thing where you can give it a, a 5 plus, or sorry, a 6 plus ward save. And I mean, that's, my Orcs and Goblins can do that for, I think, 5 points or something. Oh yeah, you make him like a savage. Yeah, and yeah. I don't even do it there, so I don't see me doing it here. But you can give him plus 1 initiative. Ooh. That could be huge. So do you do you see him having a place then, at at that point level? Oh, definitely. I can see it, just in an army. Yeah. Yeah, I can see you running him. Yeah. Even even with the other monsters, there's a pretty good saturation of monsters. So you think he's a good contender if you're looking for your guys? Well, I mean, one of the biggest things you always have with the giant is the fact that you're stubborn ten, which you're not oh, getting yeah. with the other guys. That's nice. So. Do you know, did you know this, if his uh, his table of attacks is really any different? No, it's, it, I looked at it and it's pretty much the same. I think even, didn't the old one have like an eat ability and I didn't see yeah, that here. Yeah, so. you could like take a bite out of guys and like get D3 wounds back. So that's... that's I think it's only the marks is different. Yeah, but that toughness six, that's huge, man. Yeah. Uh, next one here, chaos spawn for a 50 point thing. It's not too bad. One of the things I thought was all right is, you know how before you could take uh, Tazinch on a spawn and it would give it a breath weapon? Well, of course, now the new one thing, now that's a breath attack. So giving a breath attack on such a cheap guy, I mean, it'd be, obviously that increases its points to give it a breath it's weapon. It's a significant increase, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, that can be, a, be a, a pretty big surprise where if this guy is randomly going around to, the, to 
clear out chaff and all this stuff, and all of a sudden they hit you with something a little bit more significant, breath weapon. Yeah. And that can turn the tide right there. I think 50 points. I mean, you've got your... Uh does that, would that, could you use that to operate similar to how you use your single troll in your orcs and goblins? Like The, the problem is that random movement, so you don't know where the hell is going to be. Yeah. I know with uh, when I play my Skaven, I really like having a random movement on the flanks of my army because that, that can just really screw over those fast cab guys that try and flank around you. It's yeah. really nice having the thing where, you know, the guys just, they can't react. They can't just flee away, so. Yeah. I mean, it's 50 points, why not? Yeah, it's cheap. I mean, exactly. And he can stomp now, right? Because he's a monstrous beast. I don't think he could do that before. Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong. And I mean, everyone's going to have kind of a spot anyway. Because again, what if it comes up on your chart? Yeah. If your guy's going to exactly. die, you might as well have a spawn now. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just looking at the old book. The stomp thing? Yeah, I don't uh, see anything. So the next thing we have here is the Skull Crushers, and one of the things is pretty big is just the fact that no, they're not going to be Toughness 5 like people were thinking. Mm -hmm. They're just going to be the Toughness 4, but they have the uh, the three wounds, which is a little bit different. So Pretty much a wash though, don't you think? For the most part, yeah. Uh, to me, I'm still, the more I see this, it's something where I'm actually not a fan of these guys. They're very killy and very devastating, but it's just like my thing with Minotaurs where I just I can so easily redirect you because you're going to hit me and I can just send you off and oh now I got an easy flank on these guys. So I mean something that definitely if you're going to run them you pretty much have to run them in like the middle of your army and run a lot more fast elements so that you can keep up with it and cover it if it ever gets redirected. I don't know, these guys could kind of stand up to a flank charge though. The only other way I can see them running is a thing where if you run it actually in a larger unit, say eight or whatever it is, and in there you have your character and you have your stubborn character. You're right, stubborn crown. All right, so I kill something, I overrun. You flank me, well, I'm one plus armor. Yeah. You know, you're not going to do too much. My characters are going to be moving out of the way there anyway. Yeah. I'm going to hold, I'll reform. No, I killed that. Oh, you flank me again? Okay, hold, kill that. You know, so if you go big, I can see that. That's a lot of points. It is a lot of points. Did you mention these guys went up 15 points per model, and you still have to buy in social weapons on top of that? Yeah, but there's characters in there, right? So it was even more expensive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, I mean, they're a risk. If you're going to take them, they are awesome. So either go and own some noobs or be ready to, <laughs> to cover your butt. All right, now one of the ones that we're also talking about is Slaughter Brute, because you thought it was going to be awesome, and it was less than the awesome you anticipated. Yeah, well, I mean, just like when you look at the model, like to me, that's like amazing model. Like, just looks so cool. I was like, yeah, this guy's going to be like three hundred points. He's going to be toughness six. He's going to be like, like he looks to me like he's like a greater demon. Like this guy should just own everything. And I saw the rules, like, 205 points in Toughness 5, like, that just, I don't know, it just didn't seem to fit for me. Yeah. I'm not saying, not saying he's bad for the points, but I just thought he would be, like, better and cost more, so. For me, the nice thing, that, I mean, one of the things for people who don't know is that you actually go and you bind him to one of your characters, and then you go and he takes the weapon skill from that character, and so that can be very handy because, you know, you take that character, you give him Fencer's Blades, all of a sudden this, sudden this guy here is weapon skill 10, so defense-wise, that can be amazing. So he's only being hit on fives. Um, then you could be doing some other synergies. There's the bubble in there where you give everything the five plus regen. So that can be helping this guy too. But the big thing I see with him is that he is just your infantry killer, right? He has strength seven. You got the stomp with him, and he's just going to be crushing things. To me, it's like if if I could be taking the oh now I forgot the lizardman thing, carnosaur, carnosaur, where he doesn't have to be a mount. I would be taking him because he just runs around and kills infantry. And to me, that's this guy, right? He's just same cost as a giant, and he just runs around, and he's just going to be stomping infantry to, to, to bits, really. I mean, you have to kind of pick and choose your battles, but that's always kind of the case. Do so you think he's going to stomp infantry to bits with four attacks? Well, it's the four attacks, but it's the stomp. That's the big thing, right? Yeah, if he gets lucky. Yeah. 
I mean, you can always buy him the, the extra claws as well for 20 points if you want to get a couple more in there. And the nice thing is if you're going making him weapon skill 10 anyway. The attacks go farther. Yeah. So, I know, I think he's decent. Um, then we get to the Vortex Beast. And this one I'm not a fan of, and it's the reverse. You're thinking that he's okay. Well, I think uh, I, I like that he, he uh, has regen built in. He's got regen 5 plus built in. and I, I, Coming from Skaven, I like monsters with regen. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why I kind of like him. I think the model looks really kind of weird and dumb. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Looks always come into it. To me, the big thing I don't like about it is that its whole ability to, it, its aura of mutation is a bound spell, so not only can it be stopped, which kind of takes away from it, but second of all, everything's kind of random. You can actually be making your opponent better, so yeah. it's, it's kind of silly that way. And it's just the fact where, you know, he's then only strength 5, and he's only going to be the weapon skill 3, really takes it away from me for what he's actually going to be able to do for you. Yeah, when we were talking before, I... I didn't know that that was a bounce spell. Uh, I thought yeah. it just happened. So, yeah, that definitely, definitely makes it worse, in my opinion. But the biggest thing here with the rare units is that everything is rather solid. I mean, sure, I'm not a fan of the Vortex Beast, but if I had a random any one of these things thrown into my rare slot, I'd be happy with any of them. Is there, like, if you could say from this rare section, the biggest loser, what would you? Say, like you know, if, if I made your list for you and you saw this in your rare section, what would you be pissed off to see in there? Yeah, the mutilith. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just because it looks so stupid, I wouldn't want to use it. <laughs> I'd be embarrassed to field it. Yeah, <laughs> but you're right. Yeah, I mean, none of this is terrible for sure. Mm -hmm. So if you had to choose between the Shagoth, the Giant, and the uh, Slaughter Brute, which one are you taking? Which one am I taking for those? Well, the problem with the giant is just the randomness. And zero armor. It's and nice. zero armor, that's always a bad thing. <laughs> and I mean, one of those biggest bonuses, stubborn, is based on losing combat, which is never a good tactic to take. Mm -hmm. So really between the Sagoth and the Slaughter Brute, and really the one, I mean, to me, I see it as that they just have different roles, right? Like, after we are talking about it, the Sagoth is really an anti-monster, whereas the Slaughter Brute is an anti-infantry. You know, I could see that, you know, my rares, you could be both of these, right? One of each. And that's the thing, too, where you could be running, like, a monster list. If I had to run just one of them, I would probably run the Slaughter Brute. Just because I really like that weapon skill 10. But then, yeah, I mean, weapon skill 6 is pretty solid as well. You also, yeah, I mean, you also have to... F would you be taking Fencer's Blade if you didn't have Slaughter Brute? No. Because you should kind of factor that into his cost, too. If what? it's something... If you're taking this just to field him. A portion. But then he's cheaper than the Sagoth anyway. Yeah. Especially because you're going to buy him the Grey Weapon, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. How much are the Fencer's Blades? 35. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, so pretty, pretty awesome much, pretty much makes it even, pretty close anyway. But I mean, so that's pretty much all the selections there. But I mean, one of the things I love, like I was talking about, you could be running a monster list, you could be running a chariot list, you could be running an infantry list, you could be running a beast list, right? So we're not talking about monsters, we're talking about trolls and, and ogres and stuff like that, right? I mean, there's just a lot of different things in here and like I said as well that normally with the old book going into a game you would pretty much know what you're going to be up against now I mean if we were to go to the store and play against somebody I would have no idea what would be up against and it's not just a thing where it's the first time it's just a thing where like with orcs and goblins where it can be a real mix of everything I mean sure it'll be like well everyone's going to have their their unit of uh, warriors in there, just like everybody has their unit of savage orcs, but then things can really change for all the rest of it. So overall though, do you like the book? It's interesting. It's interesting? We'll have to see? Well, it's, it's tough to say. I mean, I, won't, I only played like two games or whatever it was with the old book. I played zero games with the new one. So, uh, it's tough to say. It's, it's definitely interesting. Mm -hmm. I wish I could use my Marauders, but 
I'm going to be sailing them down the river. Uh. <laughs> well, would you run a bunker? No, I don't think so. You just not get, well, I mean, the one nice thing is that you don't need to run a bunker because your characters are so good that you can go up into the front. And it's not that big of a deal. Mm -hmm. You know, especially if you're that Zinch one and you have the, the three plus ward and you get to reroll ones and you'll, you'll be just fine in the front. It's okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, and there's, I guess we can get the special characters with Wolfric and stuff, but I mean, that'll be another time I'll get to that. But, yeah. An okay book. You're happy with it. You just didn't want your Marauders anymore. In the future, I do not want to use them. Uh, yeah, I think it, I think it'll be. Uh, I think for a lot of people that are starting Warriors of Chaos, they're gonna love it. Yeah, for sure. Because there's there's so many like you're saying. There's so many like, but they're all new builds you can do. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like so. I think if you're getting into this, it's great because it's like, oh yeah, I could go and do this. I could go and do that. You're not hampered by, well, shit, well, I can't do that. I don't have a whole bunch of chairs. I don't have these monsters, you know? Yeah. Like, my stuff, I don't really want to use. Well, or it's it's not really that different. But I think, I think yeah, if you're if you're new coming into it or you got a really open mind, it could be a very cool book to use. What do you think about power level? I mean, one of the things I love about this is that all the broken stuff that I saw from before is gone, right? The crazy blocks of marauders that people could really abuse is gone. Mm -hmm. The chosen star is gone. The real, like, leadership stuff is gone. Do you think that it's, you know, let's say it's a comparison, right? If you compare this with orcs and goblins, do you t see them as even? Uh, <laughs> I think... These guys drawing from your years of forty k experience. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, okay. So we look if we look at our last game mm -hmm. against your orc and goblins. I used a cho not a chosen star, but a chosen unit, and the the marauders with great weapons, Mark of Corn. Yeah. We used a silly orc and goblin list, and I got I I we we did a tie. Yeah, you know. And then <laughs> now that same army just got way worse. I don't know. I gotta say, like. Orc and Goblins would beat these guys up pretty hard. Uh, that Nurgle unit we're talking about, though, where I'm basically hitting you on sixes and stuff, and maybe wounding you on sixes? We, if you get the magic in there, too, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I, like, definitely my Orcs really have to worry about these guys. Because, I mean, like I was talking about, if you make them as a, an army of attrition, yeah. I'll come in, you can hold, and then, all right, I lose my choppa, and you're just grinding me down. That's pretty specific to orcs, though, too. Yeah. But, I mean, orcs and goblins are play Unless we're talking about maybe high elves, orcs and goblins are your biggest competitors for mass infantry, you know, uh, combat army. I don't know. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. We'll have to have more games. We'll have to see how it Oh, goes. yeah, absolutely. See how your dragon ogres go. I mean, I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Spear chuckas go. <laughs> not worried. What on average you're doing two wounds if you wound? I don't give a shit. I'll probably misfire and destroy myself anyway. That would be nice. That would be. So anyway, I think we got it pretty much covered. So uh, thanks for watching, and uh, there you go. We got our orc tactical team going. So bye. That's it. I guess I don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> I see this thing's like flashing for batteries.